We've already seen that our definition of work that we started with, F delta R cos theta, or if we're talking about a force that's varying with position, we might need to look at very, very tiny infinitesimal uh, uh, displacements. We might have that an infinitesimal work. A tiny amount of work is equal to the force times that infinitesimal um, displacement, dr times cosine theta, where let's remember what we're talking about here. There's some force acting on an object with either some macroscopic uh, displacement, delta r, delta r, if the force is a constant or if the force is varying over the displacement. We, we uh, break it down into little tiny infinitesimal uh, displacements, dr, but then times the force and then times this cosine of theta, where this is the important part or, or another important part is let's remember this theta. What does it mean? It's the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector or the force vector and the infinitesimal displacement vector. This is a combination of quantities that actually comes up so often that we're going to make a new definition for just this kind of combination of vector quantities. Let's imagine that we have two arbitrary vectors. A and b. And these can be any kinds of vectors. They don't have to be the same kind of vector like a displacement and displacement or, or force and force. They can be any combination of force and a displacement, a velocity and whatever. You know, any two different kinds of vectors. The combination of the magnitude of the first one times the magnitude of the second one times the cosine of the angle between them. And so let's be very careful. What do we mean here? We've got some arbitrary vector A, some arbitrary vector B. We put them tail to tail. So wherever these vectors are in space, it doesn't matter. We move them parallel to each other. We put them tail to tail, tail to tail. The angle between them is then the angle theta. That's how we define what theta is. This combination of A, B, cos, theta is, like I said, comes up so often, we're going to define this as a new quantity, a, a, a quantity that we arrive uh, from vectors. There are different ways of multiplying vectors, and this is one of them. There is a way of multiplying vectors where the answer is another vector. There is a way of multiplying vectors where the answer is a scalar. This is a scalar, so this is sometimes called the scalar product. And the way we'll write this is A, B, and the symbol that we put in between to indicate that it's the scalar product we're talking about is just a dot. And so sometimes this is also called the dot, dot product. So we say A dot B is equal to AB cos theta. This is then referred to as the dot product or the scalar product. The scalar product or dot product of these two vectors. So the dot product or the scalar product. You can use those interchangeably. They mean the same thing. What I'd like to do is spend a few minutes and look at some of the properties of this vector combination, this way of multiplying vectors, a dot b. First of all, what is B dot A? Well, that would be the magnitude B times the magnitude A times the angle between them, which would still be cos theta. And this is just regular number multiplication, not vector multiplication. AB is the same as BA. So, B dot A is the same as A dot B. Oh, that's very important. That is the commutative property of the dot product. So it doesn't matter what order we take the dot product or the scalar product of vectors, we end up with the same thing. Then what is A dot A? If we take a vector and dot it into itself, what do we get? Well, we'll get the magnitude of the first, times the magnitude of the second, times the cosine of the angle between them. But what's the cosine, what, what's the angle between A and A? Well, those are two vectors in the same direction, so the angle is zero. Cosine of zero is one. 
So it's just a times a, in other words, it is a squared. So if we take the dot product of a vector into itself, we get its magnitude squared. Okay, very good. Another one, and this one is a little bit more tricky. Let's imagine we take the sum of two vectors, a plus b, and then we take that and we dot it into a third vector. So a, dot, uh, a plus b dotted into c. Well, let's call this vector d. So let's say that a plus b is equal to some vector d. And what we have here is d dot c. Well, what is d dot c? This will be d c cos theta, where this theta, let's be careful, this is the angle between d and c. But I'm going to switch these around and I'm going to write this as c d cos theta. But what is d cos theta? We've seen that before. It's the component of d along c. So it's the part of the d vector that's in the c direction. I'm going to write this as c d sub c. In other words, the component of d along c. Let's make a drawing of this. Let's imagine we've got our two vectors. So here is a, and let's say here is b, and then the sum is d, so this is d, and then let's imagine we've got uh, our third vector, c. Let's just say it looks up like that, okay? So what is this? This d cos theta, so this theta, remember, is the angle between d and c. It's this angle here. d cos theta will be the component of d along c. So that is d sub c, the component of d along c. But what is that? What is the component of d along c? Well, let's look. If we take A, what is the component of A along C? If we drop this down here, that would be A sub C. And then this is B sub C. So this length is the component of B along C. So we notice that DC is the same as AC plus BC. This looks very much like if a plus b e, oops, sorry, equals d, that ax plus bx equals dx, and ay plus by equals dy, ac plus uh, az plus bz equals dz. This is just the same thing, where we're looking here at the components of a and b and d along x, and a and b and d along, along y, a, b, and d along z. Here we're looking at the component of D along C, the component of A along C, the component of B along C. So what do we notice? We notice that the component of D along C is the sum of the component of A along C and B along C. Well, but what's that? Well, you can see that that will be A times the cosine of theta, the angle between A and C, and this will be B times the cosine of the angle between B and C, but ultimately, what is that? That's going to be a dot c plus b dot c. Okay, so what do we end up with? Let's take this and equate it up here. What do we have? We have that a plus b dot c is equal to a dot c plus b dot c. That's the distributive property of the dot product, or the scalar product. Okay, great. These are very, very important results. Now, I want to derive one more thing. Let's write out A and B in their component forms. So, A dot B. Let's write A in its component form. In other words, the components of A in the x, y, and z direction. So that's going to be AX, x hat, plus AY, y hat, plus AZ, oops, that was a mess, sorry, z hat. 
and then dot it into B, and we'll write B in its component form. Bx x hat plus By y hat plus B z z hat. And I hope that fit all on the screen there. Okay. Now, from the distributive property, we can take each one of these and dot it into this, and then we can take that and dot it into each one of these, again using the commutative property and the distributive property. So what we end up with is each one of these dotted into each one of these. So what we're going to do is go through these one by one and take the dot product. So what is this equal? ax x hat dotted into bx x hat. Now what is x hat dot x hat? That will be, well, we're taking the dot product of a vector with itself. That's just going to be its magnitude squared. What's the magnitude of a unit vector? It's just one. That's the definition of a unit vector. Uh, that's what we mean by a unit vector. It's a vector with a magnitude of one. So it's just one squared, which is one. So we end up with ax bx. Now, what is ax x hat dotted into by y hat? Well, what's the angle between x hat and y hat? They are perpendicular to each other. So their dot product will be 1 times 1 times cosine of 90, which is 0. So we end up with 0. x hat dot y hat is 0. What is x hat dot z hat? They're also perpendicular, so 0. y hat dot x hat, 0. y hat dot y hat, well, that's going to be 1, so we'll have an ay by. So plus ay by. And then y hat dot z hat, 0. z hat dot x hat, 0. z hat dot y hat, 0. z hat dot z hat, 1, plus a, z, b, z. There we go. This gives us another way of determining the dot product of two vectors. We have that a dot b is a, b, cos theta. But we also have a way of writing it in terms of the components. a dot b will be ax bx plus ay by plus az bz. That's another way of formulating the dot product. And we got that knowing the uh, uh, commutative law of the dot product, the distributive law, and the fact that if we dot a vector into itself, we get its magnitude squared. This actually gives us a way of determining the angle between two vectors. We can calculate the dot product by taking the product of the magnitudes times cosine theta. If we know what the components are, we can calculate this. Cos theta will then be this, this uh, product divided by the magnitudes of the vector. So that's one way of determining the angle between two vectors. The cosine of theta will be ax bx plus ay by plus az bz divided by the magnitude a, whoops, sorry, times the magnitude of b. Okay, very, very good. Now, let's remember, the reason we did this, the reason we took this dot product, was because that is actually exactly the form that we have for the definition of work. So, we can actually write this definition of work as, what do you think? This one will be f dot delta r, and this would be f dot dr. Very, very good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to generalize our definition of work into a very, very general situation where we could have some very arbitrary path in three dimensions, x, y, and z, with a force that varies at every point or any point on the path. What are we going to get in that case?